All right, so this is the fifth lesson of the Rust curves for beginners, and today we are going to talk about control flow, in particular if expressions. So in most programming languages, uh, branches and conditions are a fundamental building block, and Rust is no different. But uh, as you will see in this video, the if expression in Rust is a bit different compared to most other languages. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so we start from uh, the usual project, Rust project. And uh, as we did the last time, create a variable, hello, which is equal to five, which is an integer. And then based on a condition, we print either hello or word, okay? So in Rust conditions uh, are expressed with the if expression. So we type if, then the condition itself. So hello is greater than three. If it is, then print hello word, okay? And as you can see, we don't have any parentheses, which you would have, for example, with JavaScript, Java, and a lot of other languages. Not in this case, so you don't have to put parentheses. And if we try to run it, as you can see, we see hello world, okay? As most other languages, we have an else statement in which basically we evaluate the other branch. So we are going to print word okay and then here type hello okay and if we try to if we try to run it as you can see we get hello because hello is greater than three okay which is pretty nice as you would get in uh, most other languages now we can also have for example else if statements which are the exact same you would get uh, from other languages if we try to run it, uh, hello, because of course, hello is greater than three, which is the first expression that gets evaluated. Now, let's get to the interesting stuff. So one of the things we usually do in a programming language is assigning a variable according to some condition. So for example, in this case, hello is five. Now let's say that we have a variable name, which is usually, uh, for example, John. And let's say that we want to print hello and then the name, okay? We still haven't introduced the strings in Rust because they are not super trivial. So we first have to talk about ownership, which is topic of uh, one of the next videos. But for now, let's just uh, follow along, okay? So we want to say hello and then the name, all right? Like in this case. Let's say that you want to, for example, hi to John if hello is greater than three, or I to Mike, if it is uh, less or equal than three. So in most other languages, what you will do is just having a mutable variable, okay, like this. For example, in this case, uh, we may have that John is uh, an empty string there. And then if it is greater than three, the name is equal to John. Otherwise, uh, the name is equal to Mike. Of course, as you can see, we'll get hello John. Okay, so one of the most powerful things about Rust is that if a keyword is not a statement, but it is an expression. And if you remember from one of the previous videos, an expression means that uh, it returns a value. So what we can do in Rust, instead of doing this very verbose and if you want also inelegant thing, that we can do that the name is equal to if hello greater than three, then is equal to John. Otherwise, is equal to Mike. We must remember to add a semicolon after the if, because this is an expression, okay? And uh, as you can see, indeed, hello John gets printed, okay? So this is incredibly powerful, as you can see, because this is similar to what you will get, for example, with the ternary operator of JavaScript, which is the, the one with the question mark and then two possible values. But it is much, much, much more powerful because, for example, we can have multiple branches of the condition and so on. One thing to keep in mind is that the value return from each branch must have the same type. If we, for example, try to return a number in the other branch, the compiler won't be able to infer the correct type and uh, will throw an error, okay? So it will say that if and else have incompatible types. And this is a thing to keep in mind. 
All right, so this was all for if expressions. I hope you understood the concepts. And uh, if you didn't, please leave a comment below or check out the official documentation. And in the next video, we're going to talk about loops. So don't forget to check out that video.